we're, we are going to start seeing we're after 5.30. We do have a 6.30 meeting. So um, at least happy, happy you are here. Uh, and I will start out. I'm Ken Delata, uh, the county conservationist with the O'Connell County Land and Water Conservation Department. Um, Finnegan Lake was selected in our countywide lake study this year. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about it. And a few things I was going to mention is how uh, Zoom works. So I'll just go through it real quick. On the bottom left, you see the mute microphone that says mute. You click on that, you'll get a red line through it. We ask that everyone stay muted during the meeting, unless you have a question, then unmute yourself. That way you don't get background noise or interference. Like I said with the camera, you can turn it on or off. Um, all it is is that we can't see you when it's off. Then if you go across the screen a little bit, you see a chat. Uh, you see participant seven, then you see chat with a number one on it. If you click on that, you can see that um, uh, Tammy Billy sent a, a, tech, a, a little chat, if you wanna call it. If you have any questions throughout the meeting, just go on that um, and you just go in the bottom where it says type message. You type your question in there, hit enter and goes, and then you can close it out. And it'll show up that there's a, a question in there. We will make sure them get answered. Otherwise, you can just wait till the end if you're if you want. It's not it's not a big deal either way. It's just a just a way that you can uh, not have to try and remember it. So, other thing with that is I am going to show you with our program here at the Countywide Lake Study. I'm going to share my screen and show you how where to find all this information. I'm hoping. Everyone can see this now to the county website. Everyone can see the county website? Yep, you can see it. Okay. Um, up on the top here, this is O'Connell County's website. Dale, Dale's going to show you a shortcut to this in a few minutes, but this is the, the way to find it all the time, no matter what, long way. You go into departments, go down there in the bottom left side here. If you can see my cursor, second from the bottom says Land and Water Conservation. Click on that. Go back, uh, brings you to our homepage for land and water conservation. And on the left-hand side here, it's got already in there, county waterways, aquatic, invasive species. Click on that. And this will bring you our general information. We got about invasive species, our Healthy Waters Cost Share Program that lake groups, whether it's sportsmen clubs or associations, towns, apply for, do improvements on lakes. Um, the countywide lake study, that's what we're talking about. Then we got the county cost share program, which is cost sharing for individuals um, around lakes and streams. So you click the countywide lake study and that'll, that'll bring you into where all this information is kept about the this countywide lake study. There's different documents in here. You can look at the operational strategy and plan. Um, you can read the countywide lake study survey. They did a survey, survey uh, 400 people, I believe. The county, uh, individual lake summary reports and plans. This, this is where, uh, when we get done doing data collection or partway through, um, Ryan and uh, his staff will come up with a summary for your lake and it'll be placed in there. Well, I guess I can go in there and show you. There's all the lakes in there that have a summary. You can see Anderson Lake has a summary and they've actually got a final plan already. Yours will end up being in there once it gets to that point. So you can go look. If you'd like to look at any of these other lakes, you are more than welcome to go and see what, what they look like and what you'll be getting. So this is back on that page we were on. Um, Wakanda County All Lakes Summary. That's where they take, we put different data points in that compares all the lakes that have been done so far. It might be water clarity. It might be how many plants were found in your lake and so on. So you can go and compare uh, lakes side by side to see how, how it, yours fits in the other ones throughout the county. Um, uh, O'Connell County Lakes Project, this is what Dale's going to touch on in just a second here. Um, new topographic maps, uh, be new maps that the DNR are making uh, that they will be placed on here when we get them. They won't be on here quite as quick as everything else, but we do have them on there. Uh, then you can go down here, the meeting is going to be recorded. It is being recorded. So if friends of yours, neighbors, anybody that wants to see this that missed it, it'll be on here in about a week. We'll put it on there. They can come and watch the meeting. Here's one of the important things on here, individual lake surveys. <clears throat> As you can see, if you go down here, 
Michigan Lake survey. We ask that all of you take that. It's a, it's not that long a survey. It's basically click and uh, fill the box in whatever. And it's, it's just a, gives us an idea of what you like about Finnegan Lake, what you don't like about Finnegan Lake, how long you've been on Finnegan Lake. And it, you don't have to live on it or own property around it. It's anybody that uses it. Um, and I always say also, if you and your wife both use it, you both take the survey. It's not just one per household or any of that. So it's uh, important that you do that because that helps guide us along on how we focus um, our data collection and plan writing in the end. So, so this again is going to be the main storage of all the information. Um, uh, yeah, go here and find it. Uh, and Dale, I'm going to, from UW Extension, he's going to talk right now and jump in and kind of explain a little bit more and about his county, O'Connell County Lakes project update sheet. So with that, here's Dale. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's good to see, uh, see you tonight. Uh, uh, a little bit about the history of the project is uh, about six years ago, uh, we were meeting with a, a group of citizens and users of the waterways within the county. And we were really determined um, to uh, uh, get a nice uh, uh, document put together um, addressing their concerns. And uh, one of the main concerns that came up is uh, we really don't know much about our waterways within O'Connell County, meaning we're, we're sort of, uh, oh, beholden to studies as they just happen. Somebody puts together some money for a lake management study or, or you know, somebody comes through with a, a limited grant and it was, everything was sporadic. Now we've got over 300 lakes within the county, 200 of them are named. Um, and we were trying to figure out whether well, it's almost an impossibility to, to look at all the water resources, just lakes in general, and, and get something that could be usable. Well, long story short, uh, if we pared that down and we increase the, uh, the, uh, the workforce within the group, you're gonna be hearing from um, Stevens Point tonight, uh, DNR, um, our aquatic invasive species uh, gentlemen, uh, extension, and obviously the county. Uh, we're all here uh, working together to try to get, uh, really we're focused on the 60 lakes that have public access within the county. Now, learning some of the uh, best practices uh, from other counties, we realize that we can't do all 60 within a one, uh, one group or in a two year period. That was just too much. Uh, we really wanted to get a lot of feedback from those that are on the lakes. Uh, we also didn't want to jump on people and say, hey, we're going to offer you a no charge lake management plan uh, when somebody already just paid for one a year ago, right? So over the last six years, we've been doing uh, about uh, six lakes, six to nine lakes every year uh, with a planning cycle of two years. So we got them all staggered. So in that effort, uh, we figured we would be able to get through all 60 uh, lakes with public access. Uh, but one of the bigger concerns that we now have is the public is going to be completely confused, right? So we're going to be having out, you know, these meetings and they're going to say, well, is our lake being studied? How do we track that? So what's nice is uh, we did come up with the uh, website, which is holding all the information from uh, uh, the surveys that you could take, um, some of the uh, documents that were already completed. Uh, one document uh, Ken mentioned was the um, uh, countywide survey done a number of years ago with over 400 people giving their input. The other one was the operational strategy, uh, which is adopted by the county board. It basically identified 16 goals based on those concerns of the public, okay, of that survey. And the department heads from highway to sheriff to health and human services, park and rec, they all came up with strategies on how they could address those concerns. And they came up with 16 goals um, the county board then ratified that and adopted it um, as, as an official document. So that's there for you to look at to see what is our intent on this. So the good news is not only do you get a, a lake management plan coming out of Stevens Point and all of our efforts, uh, but we also get to roll up all that data and put it into a nice uh, Okato um, uh, Lakes Project um, a document. Now, if we have an issue with phosphorus, we can look at all the lakes that have an issue with that. And if there's an effort to go, we can go at it um, uh, very strategically. So what's interesting then is, well, how does everybody stay on track? Well, if you look on this, if you follow my cursor again, 
Where's the, um, let's see, the Ocano County All Lakes, uh, let's see here, Ocano County Lakes Project, this one right here, and I'm going to click on it. This document is updated. Uh, in the upper right corner, you see March 22. Uh, this is a pretty much a six-year-old document thus far. If you want, you can print it or just uh, uh, drag it and make a copy on your, your laptop or whatever you want. But it's good to look at that and say, okay, this is good. It's good to hand out to your neighbors, family members, whatnot. It tells you everything you need to know about this project and where to find it. Okay. So if you look at the, uh, the first paragraph, it really tells anybody what it is that we're trying to do. We do six to nine lakes a year. We, we're trying to tackle 60 lakes overall, and we're trying to go for the, the major goal of having the healthiest waters in Wisconsin. That first paragraph also has a shortcut. You can see right here, it's that blue one right, right there. If I were to click on that, it will take me directly to the site that uh, Ken showed you. So the reason uh, we have to show you both ways is that if you don't have this document with this shortcut, you still need to realize that you can find your way uh, to all that information. But if you have this document, uh, you can just uh, click on that and it'll just take you directly there. Uh, the next thing on this document uh, that I will go through is in this shaded gray area, it, it does say, please fill out that survey. Uh, not only do we wanna know the types of fish that are in the lakes uh, or the plants, we really wanna know about the people's attitude on that lake. Um, not only uh, can you have an impact, but your enthusiasm about the lake is really gonna direct uh, resources to, or maybe away from the lake, if, if you have really no, no uh, um, uh, strong feelings about the waterway. So if we can get people to express their concerns um, and fill out that survey, let us know. It'll help in the long term uh, for our plan, uh, but it'll also give us an idea of your energy level for uh, uh, getting together and trying to make things happen. So uh, please fill that out. Within this document, you'll see on the first page, it does mention goal, goal one in bold. Uh, you'll see throughout the document, uh, the goal that we have, the activity that is to take place on the, on the lake and which lakes are done. So that yellow area, there are all the lakes that are already completed. So not everybody uh, compare, uh, concerns themselves with just one lake. They may have a number of lakes that they're concerned with. This is one way for uh, the public to go back and say, okay, this part is done already. I can now look for that information. Uh, when you get down just below the yellow, you'll see the water bodies being listed. Um, and then uh, the, the uh, activity that's supposed to take place, the, the shoreland survey, for instance, first woody habitat. We have our tentative dates in there right now. As they get uh, cemented in, some of the researchers are going to go out on lakes. Uh, Brenda or uh, Ryan, somebody might have contacted a volunteer on the lake already and establish a date. Well, that's going to be more solid than what's going to be on this document. But it does give the public an opportunity to say, OK, I know that come July or August, people are gonna be on the water staring at my property for about 10, 15 minutes as they're recording and they're part of the research team. So anyway, and then at the bottom of that, just uh, where it says deliverables, this is really what it is that we want to get out of it and how it's gonna be displayed. So not to go too long, but then there's uh, goal two is in the same exact format. The dates are yet to be determined for that goal two. And then there's goal three. We, we get a, a little bit more of the uh, historical uh, days that uh, ha have occurred for these other lakes, such as Pickerel and Half Moon. And um, we'll continue on to go goal four. And you'll see a lot more lakes are appearing. And what we have to do is try to manage, because again, you got two lakes or two years of information coming across. We've got our first meeting with all of you tonight, which we're calling Meet Your Scientist. Uh, there's plenty of us online right now for you to get uh, a face put together with a name. Uh, you realize the different agencies out there. Well, uh, we have yet uh, to finish up a lot of the work yet um, in this goal. Um, but anyway, that's why these lakes are more um, uh, basically in a queue getting finalized before they're actually put into, let's say, the yellow zone. OK, so uh, if you're looking for some of the lakes, you can see, oh, OK, uh, I can track on this lake. So this document is pretty much um, everything that's on that web page into a, into a publishable form that you can get as a giant cheat sheet. 
Okay, so uh, if you're interested in talking with your neighbors or family members, you could say, oh, by the way, there is all this other data that exists on there. Contact is a lot more than just myself or Ken. Uh, we're the uh, two county, uh, basically your contacts at the county level. So uh, we can be a, a, a first uh, contact for you. And then again, on this last page, uh, we've got that sheet uh, 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 button um, that you can just click on get you right to the website. And then it just finishes up with some of the uh, document covers uh, um, as the document. So really it's it's just a nice document to have. That's our best effort. If there's anybody who's got a, a comment about making it even easier for the public, we'd be happy to hear about it. I do know that there is a town, uh, Underhill, or, uh, yeah, Underhill for the elections. They're gonna want a number of copies of this document that they're gonna hand out as people are voting as well, just to give them some information on the lakes within their area. So it, it's got a, a number of uh, um, uh, uh, good intentions and we'll try to update it as, as best we can. Usually it's uh, every uh, three months. So uh, after all these meetings are done, we're gonna be adding some new dates. So it'll come out right away in the next couple of weeks uh, with some more information. So with that really, um, I, I will finish up and then I'll turn it over to one of our, our leads out of uh, UW Stevens Point, uh, Ryan Haney. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. Um, thanks for everyone for being here. Um, hopefully you don't overwhelm me too much uh, with stuff we're throwing at you here. Um, but there's, as uh, Ken and Dale have, have, have said, we're basically just introducing this project that, that's going on. Um, it's been going on for a few years. Your lake is now coming into the fold. And um, so we're here to introduce ourselves and, um, and you can see who's involved. I just had a couple things I'll, show with, I'll share with you. Um, uh, again, the, the, the ultimate goal of this project is, was for Oconto County to have and maintain some of the healthiest surface waters in, in, the, in the state. And um, the, the, our role uh, in this project is to kind of um, uh, summarize, gather and summarize all the data available. Uh, we'll be participating in some of that data collection. Uh, the DNR does a, a lot of it. Uh, a lot of citizen monitors and volunteers are collecting data. Um, so a lot, a lot of different people involved. Uh, fisheries, uh, Tammy Paoli, uh, your fisheries biologist is on tonight as well. Um, so our, our goal, our, our job is to summarize all that data into report uh, for your lake and then develop a lake management plan. And um, the reason we've developed lake management plans is so that we have kind of a central document uh, where all the information about that lake is, is located, uh, coupled with the goals and, and actions and and things that are taking place at that lake. So whether it be uh, the town or a sportsman's club or the DNR or whomever is doing something that has to do with the lake, um, there's one central location uh, where all the information is housed. And um, again, coupled with uh, the input from the people that live around and the scientists and managers involved in that lake. Um, it's particularly important, as I know Finnegan is, is dealing with some uh, invasive species. I know stocking goes on there. There's, it's a big fishing place. So um, all the more reason to have a comprehensive uh, assessment of the lake, uh, note, have some baseline conditions uh, for what's going on there and, um, and so that we can monitor change over time. Um, the kind of the umbrella report for this project is this state of the lakes report. Uh, this is again with everything else available on the Ocano County website. And um, this summarizes all the lakes in the report. And so we, it, it gets uh, an updated version comes out each year um, that, that grabs the, the latest set of lakes and, and puts them together into this, uh, into this one report. Each of the individual lake summaries um, studies that that you'll receive or your individual lake management plans will essentially be appendices uh, to this larger report. And so this report, again, is available for um, managers uh, to prioritize and, um, and, and, and kind of capture what the needs are and what the distribution of things are in the county. Um, just a couple of figures that come out of this, um, but you can really can kind of uh, see your lake when, it, when it's added to this list. 
um, in, in a range of different things, whether you're talking water clarity or shoreland habitat or aquatic plant diversity, uh, may, maybe where does your lake stand in terms of nutrient loading and compared to the other lakes in the county and stuff like that. So that's all in that report. Um, usually we like to try and meet in person for these things and, and I can show you copies of this. Unfortunately, we're stuck in the, the Zoom world for now. Um, but in, uh, um, in, 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 when, when, when we wrap up this lake study for your particular lake, we will meet again and, and, and go over the, over the results of that study. Um, and then develop a lake management plan. And, and a comprehensive lake management plan, there's really all aspects of the lake, whether it be uh, aquatic plants, uh, what's happening in the watershed, um, what's, the, what's the fish community like, um, what's what's land use like? What are what are the you know what are the water quality samples saying? Um, so it it's really is a comprehensive uh, assessment of the lake. And once you have a lake management plan in place, um, it it tends to make a lake more competitive uh, for resources and grants and things like that because um, the the uh, funders know that there is a a comprehensive look at this lake and not uh, tunnel vision on a particular issue or problem. So here in a summary, this is what the process looks like. Your lake is starting a two-year study uh, beginning this summer. Um, you know, many of these lakes are, are thousands, 10,000 years old in this area. And so a two-year snapshot is, is really just that. It's just a brief moment in time. But for many of these lakes, it's, it's really the only information that we have thus far. And it will allow us, again, to monitor uh, change and, and compare to different uh, you know, compared to uh, uh, further studies in the future. So this will be a two-year study starting this summer. So this will go through 2022, 2023, and in through the spring of 2024. Um, and in 2024, the summary reports of the data probably in the fall will start to come out um, with the results of the study. And then we will, um, and then we will gather again, uh, either in person or in Zoom, who knows what the world will look like by then. Um, and we will uh, go over those studies, uh, go over the results, uh, go over the various uh, uh, recommendations and conclusions um, that uh, various uh, people have uh, with expertise. Again, we'll have uh, DNR, county, um, state people uh, present at that meeting. And, um, and then we hash out a management plan. So that really is, is recommendations for the lake coupled with um, what where uh, uh, managers or uh, citizens, landowners in that area uh, would like to see things go. Uh, once we have a plan, um, consensus on a plan, um, and you will go over how we'll, how that will unfold at the time. But once we get a plan developed that everyone is satisfied with, um, that plan goes on file with the DNR, with your local municipality. Again, just so that it's available for all these different entities to re to refer to. Um, and again, these these you know uh, the the county, the the various towns, they're very well aware of this process, and so. Um, we, we've already seen a lot of examples where these plans are, are coming into the decision-making process. Uh, here's contact information um, uh, for Ken, Dale, and myself, uh, but also Brenda and Tammy are available uh, with the DNR. And, um, and uh, yeah, so if with that, I don't know if uh, Tammy, you have anything, or Brenda, you would like to say, um, but uh, we would like to hear anything from you guys in terms of um, where you see the lake, maybe uh, concerns. I'm, I'm aware of a few things that are going on at the lake, but um, you know, familiarize us with, with the perspective of the lake as we go into this study, things to look out for, um, and um, any questions you have of us, or um, if nothing else, um, you, at least you've, you've met us and put a face with a, with a name <laughs> at some point, so. Um, you know, concerns with the lake, it's obviously, you know, in a, in a kind of a pocket there in some ag land. So, um, you know, I'm always watching out for the lake, um, you know, for, for that reason. I know we've got Eurasian water milfoil there in the hybrid. Um, we've got a, a good consult, consulting team on that one. So, um, you know, I kind of leave that up to them. They're, they're a, a fairly good group groups. Um, and Tammy can probably talk about the fish because I think 
Finnegan is kind of the, the recipient of fish kills once in a while. Um, you know, that may be reflected in, in some of the fish surveys. <clears throat> but I think my main concern I just want people to watch out for there is, you know, if you see any runoff or something coming off, um, let me know right away and I'll go out there and grab some samples. Brenda, is, the, um, is it the, the walleye club that kind of represents the lake with the consultant or is it the town, do you know? The, the town is the grant applicant, but okay. the sportsman's club is the one who got it rolling. Gotcha. Yeah. I think, Gary, you and I worked on that a few years ago. Yeah. Yep. yep. Hello. You're muted. No, you're not. I have uh, Bill Cole here also. So. Okay. Hello. On that, yeah. Yeah. Anything you get you'd like to share, uh, Gary or Phil? Well, I think one of the issues that we're we're having a, a severe uh, wa uh, winter kill again, and we're really looking into aeration now. Should we be holding off on that until this study is? Or we went up and talked to Jim uh, Lamers up at Pickerel Lake, looked at their systems, and we uh, you know we've had two now within the last I think Brenda I think it's last three years. Um, uh, 2019 and now 2022, but um, yeah, let's can't figure out what's happening. So, okay. Um, part of the, the study is um, I think Ken and his crew and Dale go out and, and take some dissolved oxygen readings in the middle of winter. Um, and you know, we could obviously detect what, what's going on there. And if out of the study, it did. Uh, uh, aerator is recommended, um, you know, that in the future, you can apply for an implementation grant, you know, for us to pay for it partially, if, if that's, you know, what the recommendation is. Um, this is Ken, but uh, I believe Tammy's on here yet. Tammy, do you have any information on the fish kills and stuff? Um, well, Yes, um, it appears as if there was um, was one this winter. We went out there and took some DO readings um, in the deepest part of the lake um, back in the first couple of days of March, I think it was, um, and found, you know, less than one part per million all the way up and down the water column. I think it was 2019 was the last winter kill, perhaps, and. Um, then since then, it, there was another one in the early, maybe around 2008 or nine. Um, I don't have my, I'm not on my work computer. I forgot it at work. So I'm at home on this home computer. So I don't have my files here. But the point is, is there's, um, there is a history of winter kill there. After the 2019 winter kill, um, the DNR did stock some fish in there. Um, to try to get things going again. But since we had another winter kill in such short amount of time, um, it, it's not our policy to stock again um, until maybe some mitigation measures are taken, such as aeration, um, because we would just be, you know, essentially throwing our money away and have them die off in next year, the year after, the year after. Um, but I think, um, you know, there's, I'm glad when this came up, I was glad to hear that Gary and others are already looking into uh, an aeration system. I'm glad you guys met with the Finnegan Lake folks and started to kind of get, you know, you have a contact on that. Um, you know, I've never this, I've been in this job for 15 years this summer and I've never worked with a lake group that's had to put in an aeration system. So this will be a new experience for me. Um, and so, you know, I guess I'm not really sure, and that's where Brenda can come into play, you know, how things work with a grant source if if a, the plan is required to be completed or if they can start the process sooner. Um, that would be my preference just because I know things take time and, um, you know, it may not be ready to go for next winter. We might already be looking at a couple of winters, so I guess that would be my preference, um, but I'm not, I don't really work with the whole funding and grant side of things like Brenda does. Let me check into that, see how early we can get working on that. Um, 
I'm looking online here. Is Finnegan Lake a seepage lake? Yes. Yeah, there's no no inlet or outlet, and uh, you know it's a glacial kettle. And you know, on it, it, you know, prior to that, it froze out in, in 1978, and we went 30 years without a freeze out. And now, for some reason, we've had what's well, be the third one now in the last. I guess it'd be about 15 years. And so I don't know if our springs are drying up or. You know, the water fluctuated so much in the last three, four or five years. I, and of course we went through the milfoil treatment, but uh, we just don't know what's what's happening. I mean, why is it losing the oxygen like that? But You know, I've got a similar lake to that in Chano County, uh, lake two, um, called Bolio Lake. Uh, and we saw the same thing. There was a fish kill in 2019 and then another one this year too. Um, you know, I'm, I'm attributing it to the high water levels, you know, all the, the nutrients, the sheet flow coming in, the organic nitrogen coming in. Then I'm wondering, too, if it didn't stratify or, or didn't mix during the winter. So the lake went into the winter, you know, being partially anoxic already. And that is a combination with the, the sheet flow coming off and all those extra nutrients. If, if that combination, you know, did that to the lake. We're grabbing some samples too at this Bolio Lake and talking about just to you know see what what's going on there. That maybe something we should maybe get to next fall. Um, you know, maybe you guys grab a meter and see if, if that like if, if Finnegan stratifies at all going into going into winter. You know, when turnover happens in October there. Maybe that's yeah. something we should put down, Ryan. Yeah. Well, yeah, hopefully, you know, catching, trying to catch overturns is definitely part of, you know, what I'm going to do in the fall. It can be tough for the different lakes trying to get them all at once, but, yeah. Okay. And, um, yeah, I guess so. Maybe grab a night, we could maybe grab a nitrogen sample too. Epilomatic nitrogen, organic nitrogen samples. Um, yeah, when I go out there, I'll grab the nitrogen series, just see what, what that looks like there too. So, see, maybe of interest, uh, Dale and I did the DO test this year on six lakes just last week, I think it was, and five out of the six were very low in oxygen from top to bottom. Mm. So, oh, it's like I say, something, lack of snow this year, and if there's a lot of ice, goes on his knees finishing drilling holes. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if that had something to do with it, the thickness of ice cover or what, but there's a lot of ice out there, but a lot of low oxygen. Yeah, we did have early ice at, uh, you know, in a, a lot of places in this neck of the woods. Um, one of the things we noticed when we were out there drilling our hole and doing our DO readings um, several weeks ago, there was a distinct manure smell. We didn't know if it was coming from like the water after we drilled it or if it was an airborne odor, if, you know, it was a nicer, um, sunnier day. Um, if a nearby farm field had been spread with manure and that's what we were smelling, I'm not sure. Um, but certainly, you know, it was, it's, the farming practices have changed, I guess, from the 1970s to, to now in that watershed. So that's something to keep in mind as well. And part of this study will hopefully kind of get at some of those values um, with the, the water quality well, testing. <laughs> And there is a there is a farm 800 feet from the lake that has storage and cattle. I mean, stuff. Mm -hmm. so, so there is there is animals or livestock close by. And I'm guessing that looking at the watershed, a lot of it's going to be ag land compared to our northern lakes that are wetlands and wooded and there's I, I'm guessing maybe three quarters of it's going to be egg land. So potential for a runoff is a, I guess a lot greater. You know maybe in the management plan too you know we could recommend um, some sort of, of, of you know winter wheat buffers you know around that lake as well too and if it's you know recommended in a plan we can pay for 
the winter weeder or whatever, you know, grasses in a management or not a implementation grant as well. And I mean, we'd work with, you know, you can too on reaching out, you know, with to the farmers and, you know, just to see what, if they'd be willing to do something like that as well. Sure. Some kind of cover crops and. Yeah. Is that, is that a quarry or barrel pit over there too? Yes. Just west? Okay. Yes. I don't, I don't know how active it still is, but. Yep. Yeah, we did that for the Shawnee Lake had a fairly big management plan and they looked at all the the farm fields surrounding it and there were some that did you know need some attention so um we rec you know recommended what the plant in, in those fields and I think they're in the process of, of reaching out to the producers there to see if they'd be interested in it. Cool. Anything else? Anyone have any other questions? Um, got one more comment. Yeah. Interrupt quick. Uh, just for the people listening, uh, talking uh, aeration and stuff. When I was talking uh, Oconto County Healthy Waters Grant Program, that is something that would be eligible for funding in that. Um, we have $35,000 a year, up to $7,000. Uh, 50% if you do not get um, other federal funding. If you do get other federal funding, we'll still pay up to 10% of the project costs. So uh, just, I guess, a perfect example of how that can, that program can fit into this lake uh, projects and stuff. So just wanted to bring that up when we're on it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean, I certainly wouldn't wait on this project to uh, pursue pursue your aeration and, and, and things. Um, uh, you know, this this project will definitely uh, help facilitate that whole thing. But, um, you know, I think you guys should move forward as, as, as appropriate, for sure. Hey, Ryan, I think we lost Larry on the call. Oh, okay. Hopefully he joins back in. Yeah. <laughs> He's kind hey, Ryan, of amazing. Are you going to be able to get Tammy's uh, deal readings? I, I, yeah, I mean, if they if they end up in swims, otherwise, um, yeah, maybe I can get them from her directly. But I'm guessing they'll end up in swims. Because Tammy, if we could mix that with the ones uh, Ken and I do, um, it would give us a lot more, obviously. Sure. Yeah, I can. Um, I typically don't enter them into swims, Ryan. They go into a fish. They went into a fish kill okay. database that I don't think is linked to swims anymore. I think it used to be, but our, we okay. moved our database. But I can send those directly to you, and yeah, I can also send you the 2019 data as well. As well, if you you know sure, want that. that would be so, great. Thank you. Yep, I'll make a note to do that tomorrow. Thanks, Tammy. Did you ask about Jerry? Um, that's my husband, and he had a meeting that he had to be two by six. So I'm here taking notes for him <laughs> and his wife. Andy. <laughs> We're here. <laughs> Do you and have any? Live on... oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I just said we live on Finnegan Lake. All right, thanks. Yeah, we were talking about Gary um, Hogus. Is that how you say his last name? Hi, this is Dave Dirks. Can you hear me? Yeah, I did. Uh, I'm a relatively new owner on the lake, and I reached out to the Finnegan Lake Walleye Club to uh, provide power down to the lake shore for aeration. And I just wanted you all to know that we're committed to do that. Um, awesome. I grew I grew up on that lake almost 70 years ago. So um, a little payback in, on my part. Well, that's oh. great. If, if you guys have talked to the uh, pickerel chain of lakes up there, you, you know there, there's a lot of stuff goes in. The, it ain't just a matter of throwing an aerator out there. It's who's supplying the power, where it's going to, the units are housed at, who installs it, who removes it. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it and getting power in there for them was one of the huge things. Um, so that, that's great. You can do something like that. Yeah. 
Cool. All right. Um, any other thoughts, any other comments? You don't have to think of them right now. Again, I encourage you to um, uh, con contact us if you have any questions. That website, the county website is going to be the wealth of information. But if you ever just want to um, hear some, you know, hear from one of us or, or ask us what's going on, feel free. It's, it's no problem. Well, Otherwise, um, Take, take that survey and and um, otherwise it, it, you know it'll be a, a two year cycle of, of lake study here uh, so you may see activity out there but other than that um, it'll you know once those results come out is when we'll we'll flag everyone down again and and, and start try to have another discussion about what we've found mm -hmm. I just wanted to thanks for the opportunity to for all of us to get on the same page yeah wonderful definitely. Yeah, hopefully, you know, this at the uh, it's nice to get a management plan out of this and some some resources, but the best thing is just to to learn who's uh who's involved and um and uh how to contact them and and uh, have a conversation. So, good deal. All right. Well, nobody has anything else. We'll uh we'll see you on the lake. Summer's coming. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Take care.